Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the AWS Executive Summit at AWS reInvent made possible by Accenture. My name is Dave Vellante. We're going to talk about the automation advantage, embrace the future of productivity, improve speed, quality, and customer experience through artificial intelligence. And we're here with Bhaskar Ghosh, who's the chief strategy officer at Accenture and Rajendra R.P. Prasad, who's the senior managing director and global automation lead at Accenture. Guys, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. Good to see you. Hello, Dave, thank you. Hey, congratulations on the new book. I, I know it's like, you know, it's not like giving birth, but it's a mini version, if you will. The Automation Advantage, Embrace the Future of Productivity, Improve Speed, Quality, and Customer Experience Through Artificial Intelligence. What inspired you to write this book? Can you tell us a little bit more about it and, and how businesses are going to be able to take advantage of the information that's in there? Baskar, maybe no. you could start. Okay, so I think, um, you know, if we say that what inspired us primarily the two things really start, you know, inspired us to start this project, you know, first of all is the technology change, step change in the technology. Second is the maturity of the buyer, maturity of the market. So let me explain a little more. You know, when I talk about the technology change, automation is nothing new in the industry. You know, starting from the industrial revolution, always industry adopted the uh, automation. But last few years, what happened that there is a significant change in the te technology in terms of a lot of new technologies are coming together, like cloud, data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and they are getting matured. I think that created a huge opportunity in the industry. So that is number one. Second thing, I think the maturity of the buyer. So buyers are always buying the automation, adopting the automation. So when I talk to this different buyer, different industrial buyer, suddenly we realize they are not asking about what is automation, how that will help, but primarily they are talking about how they can scale it. They have all have done the pilot, the prototype, how they can take the full advantage in their enterprise through scale. And after talking to few clients, few of our clients, then we realized that, you know, it would be best to write this book and help all our clients to take advantage of these new technologies to scale up their business. If I give a little more insight that what exactly we are trying to do in this book, primarily we dealt with three things. One is the individual automation, which deals with the human efficiency. Second is the industrial automation, which deals with the group efficiency. And third is the intelligent automation, which deals with the business efficiency or business value. So we believe that this is what will really change their business and help our client, help the automation IT users to really make create an impact in their business. Yeah, and so you talked about that, you know, the maturity of the customer and, 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 and I like the way you sort of describe that spectrum ending with the intelligent automation. So the point is you're not just paving the cow path, if you will, automating processes that maybe were invented decades ago. You're really trying to rethink the best approach uh, and that's where you're going to get the most business value. And, and RP, in thinking about the, the maturity, I think, you know, pre-pandemic, people were maybe a little reluctant or uh, as Bhaskar was saying, maybe needed some education, but, but how have things changed? I mean, obviously the pandemic has had a huge impact. It's accelerated things, but, but what's changed in the business environment in terms of the, the need to implement automation, RP? Thank you for, that is an excellent question. As we went through the pandemic, you know, most of the enterprises accelerated what I call as the digital transformation, technology transformation. And the overall time that it takes to do the transformation is compressed. You know, most of the enterprises now do compressed transformation. The core of it is innovation and innovation-led technology and technology-based solutions. To drive this transformation, Automation, artificial intelligence becomes heart of what we do while we are implementing this accelerators, innovation enablers within the enterprises. Most of the enterprises prior to the pandemic were looking automation and AI as a solution for 
cost efficiency, saving cost, and you know, deriving capacity efficiencies as if they do the transformation journeys. When we press the fast forward button through the transformation journey, leveraging automation, what happens is most of the enterprises switch the focus from cost efficiency to speed to market, application availability, and system resiliency at the core. When I speak to most of the CIOs who are involved in the tech transformation, they now embrace automation and AI as a core enabler to drive these journeys towards you know, growth, innovation-led application availability and transformation and sustainability of the applications through their journey. Our book addresses all of these aspects, including the most important element of AI, which is compute, storage, and the enablement that it can accomplish through cloud transformation, cloud computing services, and how AI and machine learning te technologies can you know, benefit from transformation to the cloud. In addition, we also address and talk about automation in the cloud, you know, automation taking journey towards the cloud and automation once you're in the cloud, what are the philosophy and principles you should be following to drive that automation? We also provide holistic approach to drive automation by focusing process technology that includes talent and change management and also addressing automation culture for the organizations in the way they work as they move forward. So you, you mentioned a couple of things, compute and storage. And, and when we look at our surveys, guys, it's interesting to see, especially since the pandemic, four items have popped up where all the spending momentum is. Cloud, uh, for obvious reasons, scale and, and resource and, and you know, be able to work remotely. Containers, because a lot of people have workloads on-prem that they just can't automatically move into the cloud, but they want to do development in the cloud and maybe connect to some of those on-prem workloads. RPA, which is, you know, underscores automation. And of course, AI and, and RP, you mentioned uh, uh, compute and storage. And of course the other piece is data. So we have all this data, but so my question is how ha has the cloud and AWS specifically influenced changes in automation and AI? Brilliant question and brilliant point. I say, you know, whenever I talk to my clients, one of the things that I always say is AI is nothing but an UI for the data. <laughs> Let me repeat that. AI is the UI of the data. So the data plays underlying and very critical part of you know, applied intelligence, artificial intelligence, and AI in the organizations, right? As the organization move along their automation journey, like you said, robotic process automation to containerization to establishing data, the you know, building the data cubes and managing the massive data, leveraging cloud and how AWS can help in a significant way to help the data stratification, data enablement, data analysis, and you know data clustering, classification, all the aspects of that, what we need to do within the, within the data space, that helps for the large scale automation effort. The cloud and AWS plays a significant role to help accelerate and enable the data part. Once you do that, building machine learning models on the top of it, leveraging containers, clusters, DevOps techniques to drive, you know, the AI principles on the top of it is very, you know, it's kind of makes it easier to drive that and foster enablement, advancement through cloud technologies. Alternatively, using automation itself to kind of enable the cloud transformation, data transformation, data migration aspects, to manage the complexity, speed, and scale is very important. The book stresses the very importance of fueling the motion of the entire organization through agility, embracing new development methods like automation in the cloud, DevOps, DevSecOps, and the importance of overall cloud adoption that builds the foundational elements of you know, making sure your automation and AI capabilities are established in a way that it is scalable and sustainable within the organizations as they move forward. Great, thank you for that, RP. Uh, Bhaskar, I want to come back uh, to this notion of maturity and, 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 and just apply it to automation. So 
Andy Jassy made the phrase undifferentiated heavy lifting popular, but that was, you know, largely last decade applied to IT. And now we're talking about deeper business integration. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, automation certainly solves the problem of, okay, I'm going to take mundane tasks like provisioning storage and compute and automate that. Great. But what are some of the business problems that deeper business integration that we're solving through things that, and you, I want to use the phrase that you used earlier, intelligent automation. What is that? And can you give an example? That's a very good question, Dave. See, as we said that the automation is a journey. You know, if we talk to any client, so everybody wants to use data and artificial intelligence to transform their business. So that is very simple. But the point is that you cannot reach there until unless you follow the steps. So in our book, we have explained that the process, that means, you know, we defined in a five steps. We said that everybody has to follow the foundation, which is primarily the tools driven, optimize, which is process driven, then efficiency improvement, which is primarily RPA driven, then comes predictive capability in the organization, which is data driven, and then intelligence, which is primarily artificial intelligence driven. Now, when I talk about the use of artificial intelligence and this new intelligent IT in the business, what we, what we mean is basically improved decision-making in every level in the organization. I'll give you an example. You know, we have given multiple examples in this book. In a very simple example, if I take, suppose a financial sector organization, they're selling wealth management product to the clients. So they have a number of wealth management products and they have number, you know, there are a number of clients with different profile, but now what is happening, this artificial intelligence is helping their agents to target the right product for the right customer so that the success rate is very high. So that is a change. That is a change in the way they do business. Now, some of the platform companies like you know, Amazon or Netflix, you will see that this, this skill is a very native skill for them. They use the artificial intelligence, try to use everywhere. But there are a lot of other companies who are trying to adopt this skill today. Their fundamental problem is they do not have the right data. They do not have that capability. They do not have all the processes so that they can inject the decision-making artificial intelligence capability in every decision-making to empower their workforce. And that is what we have written in this book to provide the guidance to this in this book, how they can use the better business decision, improve the, create the more business value using artificial intelligence and intelligent automation. Interesting, uh, Bhaskar, I, I, I want to stay with you. You know, in their book, in the middle of last decade, uh, Eric Brynjolfsson and Andy McAfee wrote The Second Machine Age. And they made the point in the book that machines have always replaced humans in, in sort of various tasks. But for the first time ever, we're seeing, you know, machines replacing humans in cognitive tasks. And that scares a lot of people. So how do you inspire employees to embrace the change that automation can bring? What, what are you seeing as the best ways to do that? That's a very good question. The intelligent automation implementation is not an IT project. Mm -hmm. It's primarily change management. It's primarily change in the culture. The people in the organization need to embrace this change and how they will get empowered with the machine. It is not about the replacing people by machine, which has happened historically into the earlier stages of automation, which I explained. But in this intelligent automation, it is basically empowering people to do the better job. I'll give you an example. That is the thing we have written in the book about a, about a newspaper, 100 years old newspaper in Italy. And you know, this industry has gone through multiple automation and changes, so, uh, black and white printing to color printing to digital, everything happened. And now, what is happening? They are using artificial intelligence. So their writers are using those technologies to write faster. So when they are writing immediately, they are getting supported with the data. They are supporting with the related article. They are supporting with the script. Even they're supported with the heading of this article. So the question is that it is not replacing the news, you know, the content writer, but is basically empowering them so that they can produce the better quality of product, they can be better writing in a faster time. So it's a very different approach. And that is why 
is a needs a change management and it's a cultural change. Got it. RP, what's in it for me? Why should we read the automation advantage? Maybe you can talk about some of the key takeaways and, and you know, maybe the best places to start on an automation journey. Very good question. The first step in your automation journey and cloud adoption journey is to start simple and start right. If you know what's ham free, one of the process guru says, if you don't know where you are on a map, a map won't help you. So to start right, a company needs to know where they are on a map today, identify the right focus areas, create a clear roadmap, and then move forward with a structured approach for successful adoption. The other important element is, if you automate an inefficient process, you are going to make your inefficiency run more efficiently. So it is very important to baseline and you know, establish the baseline and know where you are on the journey map. This is one of the key themes we discuss in the Automation Advantage book with principles and tips and real world examples on how to approach each of these stages. We also stress the importance of building the right architectures for intelligent automation, cloud enablement, security at the core of automation, and the platform-centric approach. Leading enterprises can, you know, adopters and, you know, whether they are in the early stages of the automation journey or they are in the advanced stages of automation journey, they can look at the automation advantage book and build and take the best practices and the and what we provided as a practical tips within the book to drive their automation journey. This also includes importance of having right partners in the cloud space like AWS who can accelerate automation journey and making sure a company's cloud migration strategy includes automation, automation led AI and data as part of their journey management. Yeah, that's great, good, good advice there. Uh, Baskar, bring us home, and maybe you could wrap it up with the, the final, final word. So let me keep it very simple. This book will help you to create difference in your business with the power of automation and artificial intelligence. Now that's a simple message. And no matter what industry you're in, there is a disruption scenario for your industry. And that disruption scenario is going to involve automation. So you better get ahead of, ahead of the game there. The book is available, of course, at amazon.com. You can get more information at accenture.com slash automation advantage. Guys, thanks so much for coming in the Cube. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. And thank you for watching this episode of the AWS Executive Summit at reInvent made possible by Accenture. Keep it right there for more discussions that educate and inspire. You're watching the Cube.